Welcome to the Books on Air podcast. I'm Suzanne Harris, and my listeners get the backstory behind every book. I have a question for you. What do an author, a trauma therapist, and an English professor have in common? It's my pleasure to be joined by author Leslie Mallard Zaffron and her collaborators, Dr. Cinda Kane, who's a professor of English, and Tara Kellogg, a trauma therapist. They're here to talk about their wonderful children's book, Fantastic Florence, It's Not Your Fault, a story behind bullying. It's such a pleasure to welcome the three of you. I feel like we're old friends. We've been chatting before we started the interview. Welcome to Books on Air, and thank you for joining me today. Thanks. We've been looking forward to it. Now, I'm curious, and I shared this with you before we started talking on our our interview. Some time ago, I had this just epiphany that every single book has two stories. One story is the obvious one, the one that whoever picks up a copy of that book reads. The reader gets that story that the author has shared with them. But there's always a top secret story. There's always that story that the reader doesn't know. There's the story about how the book came to be. Now, Leslie, you're billed as the author, and Tara and Cinda, you're both billed as collaborators. Where did the idea come from for Florence? And let's talk about what Florence is as well. So Florence came to me when I was driving to meet a friend for lunch, and I, a plastic bag flew across my windscreen. I immediately had an idea for a story, immediately. And I knew that I wanted this bag, who was going to be named Florence, although I didn't know it at that time, was going to have adventures. And I, honestly, if it hadn't been such a good friend, I would have turned around and gone home. As it was when I got to the parking lot of where we were having lunch, I started scribbling notes. And I should tell you, such a thing has never happened to me before. I've never had uh, this sort of epiphany where, you know, you get an idea for a story, and it was basically almost completely written. Now, I should tell you that is not actually the book that we're talking about today, which is the book about bullying, but it was the story of how Florence comes to have adventures, which is another book that's also been published. And then, and I'll make it short because I want Cinda to pick up the story, through an extraordinary series of events, I made friends with Cinda. In fact, there is a homage to her in the opening, which says it all started with a dress because my husband noticed Cinda's beautiful dress. When we were in a restaurant, we started talking, and the rest is history, as the phrase goes. And I showed this story to Cinda, and Cinda had an idea. And Cinda, I should turn it over to you. Thank you. Okay, so yes, uh, Leslie shared her story with me, which I was delighted. She said, oh, would you read this and tell me what you think? And I said, I'd love to. And as I read it, I I saw how Florence could be, you know, an advocate for children, you know, a little bit different than what Leslie had, had, you know, written about, thinking about, you know, families and flying kites and, you know, learning about things in the world. And I thought, well, she really could help children see things that that are happening that are a little on the traumatic side and, you know, make them feel better. So then Tara came into the picture because Tara and I have been dear friends, more like sisters, for most of our lives. And when she first started in her career as a child and marriage family therapist, she always would have in the trunk of her car all of these instructional materials where she would go in and do her, you know, trauma therapy with children. And I thought, she needs a book like this. So let's put this all together. And Tara, you can tell us your part of what you saw with Florence. Thank you. Yeah, so I was so excited because I had always had a dream of putting a series together um, 
for a trauma series. So, so I'm a nationally certified TFCBT therapist, which is trauma focused cognitive behavioral therapy, um, which is helping kids as young as three years old up to 18 years old who have experienced traumatic events. And I always had this passion of wanting to do like um, books around different traumatic events, but I could never come up with a character. And so when Cinda approached me and Leslie had this amazing idea about Florence in this bag, I was like, oh my gosh, this is awesome because sometimes and more times than not, kids keep things on the inside and not, you know, able to put them out on the outside. And Florence being a bag has things inside of her, but then writes a beautiful, powerful message to children on the outside. So it was just a, you know, it was meant to be. It was one of those things that the three of us were meant to come together and, you know, work collaboratively on this series. So it's very exciting for all of us. What an amazing story. You're absolutely right. I mean, that has kismet written all over it, doesn't it? I mean, <laughs> it does, yeah. Yeah, it really does. I mean, what are the chances that this would happen? I, Wow. I had, I did not know the backstory, and I think that is absolutely astonishing. What I really like, let's talk a little bit about the character of Florence. I like the bag. Now, this is what I think, because I read the story. I think Florence is a recycling bag. Am I right? Yes. And so she can, she's going to go on, she can go on and on and on, and she goes different places. Let's give a little bit of an overview of the story that's in A Story About Bulleting, Fantastic Florence, It's Not Your Fault, A Story About Bullying. Let's give an overview to the listener. So I guess the overview, and I should tell you that when... Tara had this idea and Cinda had this idea. I said, well, let me write a book and you tell me if this is what you had in mind. And I said, I want to start with bullying because I was bullied. And so this is a story that actually was very therapeutic for me to actually write. Um, so Ella is a character who is being bullied and she doesn't know what to do about it. And she bas and basically Florence comes into her life through sort of serendipitous ways, and Florence ends up helping her to think of some strategies, think of some things that she can do, and make validate her feelings and make her realize that she's actually okay. Um, and I don't know, Tara and Cindy, if you want to add anything to that. I thought I, I think you made it very clear. I thought the message, I, I love this idea. Florence is a recyclable bag, and she's sitting in Ella's room, and she's she's full of clothes that have been given to Ella by another mother, given yes. to Ella's mother, and they're to fit her, and et cetera. But the thing that I thought was so cool was that you have Florence be able to write a message to Ella about exactly what's going on with her. And Ella looks at the bag, and I love this childlike wonder that you put in here. She looks at the bag, sees the message, reads it, realizes, wait a minute, that's written to me. How, how could that be? How could that possibly be written to me? But it is, and so I'm going to think about it. Children will do that suspension of disbelief because they have the idea that belief in magic. I mean, we all had it when we were children. We lose it as adults, but we all had it as children. So I love that you incorporated that into the well, story. The magic was really important. In fact, I had said to Tara and Cinda, the only way I can make this work is if I can give Florence magical powers. And Florence's magical powers are not only that she can write on herself when something is very meaningful to her, but that she can hear children's thoughts, not grown-ups, just children's. And that was really important because we want her to focus on the children. So that was really important. So thank you for bringing that up. Yeah. I thought that was very important, too. Thank you. So let's read a little portion of this so that our listeners will get a feel for how the book sounds, because I really like the way it sounds. Thank you. So I'm going to read the part where really Ella is at her lowest point. 
she's come home from school and she's thrown herself on the bed and Florence is watching her and she's already been worried about Ella all day, wondering what was happening because she knows the bullying is going on. And here are the thoughts that Florence hears that Ella's thinking. I don't know what to do. I tried to stay away from Frida and Bo, but they found me. They said I was stupid and ugly, and they laughed at me. Maybe I am stupid and ugly. I don't want to think about all the other mean things they said. Why do they do this to me? I never did anything mean to them. Ella stopped for a moment. Did I do something? Maybe this is all my fault. You know, that really has such a ring to me about truth. Is that something that's based on thoughts that you had when you were bullied? Absolutely. I thought so. It rings too true. And don't you think that those thoughts are universal? I'm sure, and I'm sure Tara could speak much more to that since she has, I'm sure, seen many situations with this. Yeah, so they're called what we, in therapeutic terms, cognitive distortions. So what happens when children live with traumatic events, they start writing an unhealthy narrative that it's their fault, they could have done something different. So it's definitely universal um, because it goes back to the idea of the just world. So as children, we are, you know, taught that good people get good things and bad people get bad things. And this is called the just world narrative. So when kids, something bad happens to children, they internalize it and think there's something wrong with them. So unfortunately, it's a very common theme against uh, with trauma and trauma responses within children. And I have to bring up social media and all of the social media bullying that happens because it plays right into what you just said. Yes. Yeah. And unfortunately, you know, we we talk about it, you know, my generation and Leslie and Sinna's generation, if you were bullied at school, that you had a little bit of a reprieve because you went home um, on that after school or the weekends and you didn't have that social media. But what happens now is bullying never stops. It's ongoing and it's spreading. And it's just like Chinese water torture, the dripping on your forehead because the bullying never stops because there's the kids are so tied. So many people are so tied to their phones and they pay so much attention to all of the social media platforms and to what people are saying about them. And I just I love that you have really put that in the book without using the phone you're using a bag and I love that you're reinforcing the message about recycling by using Florence as a bag you've just got so many positive messages in the book and I I call this a children's book but before we started um, taping before we started recording we had a conversation about the audience and it's really you guys see this bigger than I saw it when I was thinking about it. So who really do you see as the audience for this book? Everybody. I mean, it's it's if, so there's a quote that is very, you know, dear to me. And, and bullying does not only affect the person that is being bullied, but it affects the bullier and it affects the people who witness bullying. So there's a whole, you know, theme here that that everybody um, has different reactions to this, right? The bully or obviously probably is living with some, you know, stuff going on with themselves. And then the witnesses might feel guilty because they don't know what to do or if they should intervene. And then obviously the, the person who's bullied, you know, starts, um, you know, questioning themselves, having low self-esteem, many different factors with that. So it, it affects it affects everybody, um, and no matter how old you are. And just like Leslie shared, you know, she's an adult, and she experienced bullying growing up, and she still has memories around that. So even even adults who have experienced their own bullying, we're hopefully this is can reach to them as well. Well, and let's face I, it. I, I, Go ahead. Oh, I, I, I was just going to add in there that, you know, when it comes to who is our audience, it really kind of is everybody. It crosses all different generations. 
So as a, a former school teacher, you would, you know, recognize this, Suzanne. So you have these students in the classroom and so much of, of what's happening in the classroom is, is evident of what's happening outside of the classroom, what they bring in with them, what they perceive, how they interact with students, other teachers, their peers, so and how their parents may or may not be involved or what's happening that morning. I mean, it's not just this one space that you're in in a, in a school environment for a couple hours. It's everything connected. And, and I think that this book and, and this story of Ella, it brings everyone in. So we've got the school, we've got the teacher who may or may not notice. We have the parents who may have something else going on. We have the friends, we have the siblings, we have, you know, Ella herself. Um, And then again, if we, you know, bring in like resources in the community and we look at, you know, therapists like Tara and and past trauma, as Leslie suggested, it really is a conversation for everyone. And this, but on on the basic level of, we don't have to go too deep. We don't have to bring out all of this trauma right now. But we certainly have this conversation and this and this this common bond and the basic message of it's not your fault. And and Tara brought that to the table. And I just love that part because especially with the, the terrible problem with bullying, students believe and children believe they bring this on themselves. So, you know, what did I do? And so they have to realize, like, it's, it's so much more that's happening during that day in that classroom, in that setting, in that home, in this world. And I, I want to add that one of the fantastic things that we're doing and that I'm so grateful that Tara and, and Cinda are in my life just because they're amazing women, but because of their ideas is we know bullying is not the only topic. Um, we, we've already uh, published another book about abandonment, two little boys who spend, have a night um, sleepover and they discover their fathers have both left them, which they didn't know. There's a book that will be coming out soon about neglect. And we're looking at other topics, too, that we think are so important. And I'm so grateful that I have them to sort of help me with this as we're thinking about social anxiety and self-esteem and so many different topics. Um, And the good news is that we also do want to write some books that are not so much focused on trauma, but also focused just on what it's like to live in the world. You know, what's it like to be out there so that all children get to know Florence, because we think she's too wonderful to only be used for the children who unfortunately are having to struggle with traumatic experiences. I'm so glad that you're thinking more globally like that because I couldn't agree with you more. I just think that the whole idea, you can expose kids to so many different things and several things. I mean, you know, my brain is just exploding. We talked about that earlier, but you you give me so many ideas listening to you. And the analogy that came into my head was the uh, the analogy of dropping the, the rock into the still pond. If a bullying incident occurs, it's that rock that's dropped into that still pond. And those concentric circles don't just stay right there. They spread out much further than you can ever imagine. And how do you get them to stop? And the idea that Florence can transcend anything that's traumatic, I mean, I I can see you doing all kinds of books. I think what I'm saying is I'm very pleased that this is going to be a series and that we're talking about one particular book in a series. I hope that you guys write a million books because I think it's just such a great idea. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, my pleasure. And you know this is genuine. I mean, I really am, am so impressed with what you've done. I just love it. Let's tell the listeners where they can find the book. Now, Amazon is the big bookseller in the world right now. And so you are on Amazon. Let me give the full name of the book and the how to find it on Amazon. All you have to do is just put Amazon in your browser and click on it, and it will bring their homepage right up. Now, if you've never bought a book on Amazon, and I'm sure there's somebody out there perhaps not listening to my voice, but perhaps listening to my voice, there will be a search feature, and it's just a big, long, light gray box. And all you have to do is type in fantastic, F-A-N-T-A-S-T-I-C, Florence, F-L-O-R-E-N-C-E. It's not 
your fault. A story about bullying by Leslie, L-E-S-L-E-Y, Millard, M-I-L-L-A-R-D, Zafran, Z-A-F-R-A-N. Click on that, and the cover of the book will come right up. You'll see a picture of Florence right there on the cover, and you can buy it on that page. There's also a little description of the book that you can read. And sometimes people don't want to buy books from Amazon simply because they are the biggest bookseller market right now. Where else could they find the book? Uh, Barnes & Noble Noble. has it. Online? Uh, Yes, online and Target. Um, And our publishing company, Author House, if you have an account with Author House, our publishing company also has access, and you can buy the book there. You know, I'll bet if you walk into a brick-and-mortar bookstore and you simply give the person behind the counter the title and the author, I'd be willing to bet they could order it for anyone. Yes, my understanding is Barnes & Noble are definitely doing that. Perfect. Now, you guys are doing a little bit of social media. Tell me what's on Facebook. Um, Right now on Facebook, we have, you know, where you can order the book, where you can order the book on Facebook, and then it has pictures of the book and some reviews of the book. And the same thing with Instagram. On, with, when you go to our Instagram page, you can see what the book looks like inside. We have a couple pages you could read. And we're going to work on a, a TikTok video <laughs> soon. Great. Soon. <laughs> Great. I can't wait. <laughs> Coming soon. <laughs> I can't wait. All right. One last question. And I'd like to hear from all three of you. I always like for authors, and in this case, authors and collaborators, because you guys have really written this together. I mean, you're just really mushed together. All three of you are are authors in my mind. I like to give you the last word about the work, because this is your work, and this work is, to me, very special. And I just see so much in it. And I think the three of you are wonderful collaborators, and what a fabulous happenstance that the three of you happened to get together with this idea. When our listeners become readers and they buy a copy of the book, now I also see this as a book that could make memories. If the audience is a parent and a child, a grandparent and a child, an older sibling and a child, and perhaps the adult or the the sibling is reading the book with the child, this would create wonderful memories. Children's books, for me, are magical like that. They just create these terrific memories. What do you want those readers, whether it's an adult or a sibling or a child themselves, what's the big takeaway that you have that you want them to get what message is the bottom line it's not your fault I love that it's not your yeah it's not your fault when other people treat you poorly and I want them to go ahead Cinda I was going to have you end it, Leslie. (laughs) Oh. Um, You can tell we didn't rehearse this, right? (laughs) No, we didn't rehearse. I was just thinking, you know, she has her beautiful, soothing voice, and I'd I'd like to hear her voice last. Um, So I I think I would just, again, like it's the beginning of a conversation, the, the, the rippling effect. I love the way you gave that analogy that, you know, children are struggling right now, and we need to recognize that and find ways to help them and meet them where they are. It's so beautiful, Cinda. I I want, I guess, I want what I would have wanted for me. I want them to feel comforted, that somehow maybe it's not as bleak as they think and there may be a way around this situation to make it better. I want them to know that they're valuable 
and that even if they're not being told that by these children, that they still have value. And of course, Tar is such an important, incredible phrase that it's not their fault. Leslie, Tara, Cinda, you guys, I just want to thank you so very much for sharing Fantastic Florence with us and with our listeners and the wonderful happenstance that brought the three of you together. It's just such a pleasure to talk with you. Thank you so much for taking your time to be our, my guest on thank Books you. on Air. Thank you, Suzanne. Thank it was you for wonderful. having us. Now remember, you can find Fantastic Florence, It's Not Your Fault, a story about bullying on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and Target. You've been listening to the Books on Air podcast brought to you on webtalkradio.net. You can also hear this podcast on Spotify, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, and Apple Podcasts. I'm Suzanne Harris, and I hope you'll join me for our next Books on Air podcast because remember, you never know who's going to be here, and you never know what we're going to talk about. Thank you so very much for listening.